Hello, and welcome to another deep water tutorial. This tutorial is all about the reports that are generated at the end of each round. Uh, these reports provide you with the results of your decisions for that round, and uh, also uh, give you a sense of where you stand with the competition. So let's log on. It's always the first step, log on to your account. And what I'm going to do here is uh, just quickly review how to make decisions. Uh, then we'll process those decisions and look at the results. So right now we're in uh, round one. Take a look at the calendar. Uh, the pra first practice round is uh, has closed. And uh, the current round, as shown in green, is round one. Future rounds are in white. So if we go to the rig decision page, we make our decisions on the right hand side. And uh, one way to uh, think about these decisions is in relation to baseline values. There are benchmark or baseline values for each of these choices. And let me select those from this drop down box. And the baseline values are, you can think of those as the manufacturer's recommendation. You can uh, do more or less than any of these, um, but uh, this is sort of the, the way to orient yourself in terms of where to start. And as you play the game, uh, the variation of these numbers will make more sense and you'll have a better sense of, of how to vary them yourself to maximize how well you play the game. So we're gonna operate this round. We're gonna produce no overhaul, not gonna install any pollution control equipment. The baseline production value is 1.1 million barrels, but um, let's imagine you want to be a little bit more uh, aggressive, a little bit more aggressive, and uh, change that to 1,200, uh, sorry, 1,200,000 barrels. Maintenance, uh, the baseline is $8 per barrel. But let's say you want to be a little bit aggressive here too, at least in terms of net income, and you're going to just bump that down a little bit, maybe to get an edge on the competition. Safety spending, uh, let's leave that where it is. 1.2 million is always the um, is the baseline, so uh, so we're just going to leave it right there. Now here you have choice to hire, fire, or train crew. So let's uh, Let's imagine that uh, you want to hire five people and you're going to hire five people because you want to send five off for training. There's a certain benefit in terms of safety to having more of your crew trained. So in the first round, let's start down that path, send five off to training and hire five to replace them. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can just send the five off and that's fine. Um, you can hire five, you can hire 10, you can hire as many as you want. Um, these are not necessarily connected, but the thought is here, let's just send five off for training and then uh, replace them with five new hires. When the five crew that go for training come back, then you'll have a, an additional five overall for your crew count. Okay, so we are going to submit decisions there. Alrighty, so now we'll wait for the uh, round to close. And you see here's the green uh, box that confirms that your decisions have been accepted. And you need to check your email as well for that confirmation. Okay, so we'll just wait for the round to close and then come back and look at the reports. Hello and welcome back. So the first round has closed. And we're going to take a look at the reports for that first round. Now you'll notice that... Uh, Sometimes when you log on, there'll be this uh, message or some sort of message in the yellow bar at the top here. This tells you if you have uh, new announcements since you last logged on. Notice we're in round two, so uh, most likely this announcement has something to do with a special decision for round two. And we can uh, click here to look at that announcement or go over to calendars and announcements. Just click here and we see here's an announcement and this has to do with a, a challenge, a decision challenge for round two. So you can read that uh, when you prepare to make decisions for round two and that will help, help you make your decisions. Okay, but our focus now is to look at the reports for round one. 
and we can see those reports uh, here uh, on the right hand side under reports and there's option to look at reports for prior rounds the only prior round so far is round practice it's practice round one so we're going to look at the reports for round one. There are two types of reports. There's the operations and financial report, and there's the market report. So let's look at the market report first. OK. So the market report uh, provides you with some information about your competitors. This is a report that everybody in your game sees each round. It lists all the competitors and some high-level financial results on this first page. Second page, it provides high-level operations results. And a third page, high-level social impact results. So let's go back to the first page. This allows you to see where you are in relationship to your competitors, how well you're doing. So revenues, net income, net cash flow, and ending cash for you and all of your competitors. So you see in the first round, um, some competitors are making money and some aren't making money. And that's uh, simply a result of having made different decisions. You can look at the uh, operations section of the report. Again, this is for round one. There are seven remaining rounds for a total of eight rounds. And you see the production, this is the cumulative production, the ending crew count, average hours per worker, and the percent of workers that have been trained so far. So if you look quickly at this uh, crew count, you can see that uh, uh, there have been different decisions made about the crew. Some have added to crew, hired crew. Um, uh, Riley herself uh, has added five. And some have... Uh, laid crew off already, uh, probably in an attempt to save on expenses. Okay. And then here, the social impact section. This uh, gives you if there are any fatalities, injuries, safety violations, CWA or the Clean Water Act violations. And uh, so far, uh, we don't seem to have any of those. Here's uh, uh, monetization of the social cost. And then we have uh, carbon footprint uh, data. There was no ethical challenge for this round, so there's nothing in this column. So that's the market report. And again, everybody sees that. Everybody sees the same market report. Now let's take a look at the operations and financial report. Now this is a report that just you will see. Uh, only you see the results for your company. Every other company, every other competitor will get a report for themselves. It looks just like this, but they will not see your report. So this contains uh, the proprietary information about your decisions and more detailed results. So let's uh, take a look at this result uh, or this uh, report. First up here, uh, we have the current round. This is the report for round one. There are seven rounds remaining. Uh, for a total of eight rounds. On the right in this purple section, uh, it's a basic information, your team name, your instructor section, and the team leader. Now, if you go back to the left, under current round operating decisions, this reports to you the decisions that you made for this round. You decided to produce no overhaul, wanted to produce 1.2 million barrels of oil, um, spend $7.75 per barrel on maintenance, 1.2 million for safety, hire five, and train five. So that gives you your decisions for that round. And then the rest of the report shows you the results of those decisions. The operational status is producing, that's good, means you didn't blow out which is the other operational status, or shut in. Uh, this gives you uh, production, the current production this round, in terms of barrels of crude oil, and the total production for the game so far. We're in round one, so obviously they're the same. Now, one interesting number you're going to want to pay lots of attention to is this number here, 
Rig Equipment Condition Index. And let me take a closer look at that. This starts out at 100. So this is an index. And what this index does is it gives you sort of a, a numerical measurement of how well your equipment is operating, what kind of condition it's in. Is it in very good condition or is it worn out and uh, about to break down, which could cause problems. It starts at 100. Uh, there is no maximum and no minimum. The number could even go negative. The higher this number is, the better condition your equipment is in. The lower the number, the poorer the condition of the equipment. So since it started at 100, at the end of this round, it's at 93, it's gone down a little bit, which indicates that the equipment has, uh, has, has worn a bit and is not in as good condition as it was at the beginning of the round. Now, what determines the condition of your equipment? That's determined completely by two factors, how much you produce and how much you spend on maintenance. If you produce the baseline, which is uh, 1.1 million barrels, and spend the baseline, $8 per barrel on maintenance, your rig equipment condition index, the RECI, will stay at 100. But here the decision has been to produce more than baseline and spend less than baseline on maintenance, stressing the equipment more than normal. So that brings the condition of your equipment down. Now, why does that matter? That matters because the poor condition your equipment is in, the lower this number, the greater the probability of something going wrong, of something bad happening, such as a blowout, which, which, is, uh, which is very bad. So you really want to pay attention to this rig equipment condition index, where it is each round. You want to make sure it doesn't get too low, and you need to understand uh, that it's driven by how much you produce. The more you produce, the lower the RECI goes. And by the maintenance expense, the less you spend on maintenance, also the lower the condition index goes. So you can adjust production and maintenance each round to make sure you're operating relatively safely. All right. There is no magic number uh, that's a good number or a bad number. Uh, you just need to realize it starts at 100, lower numbers, the lower the number is, uh, the greater risk you run of a blowout, the higher the number, the lower the risk you run. Okay, and here's uh, some information on your blowout preventer service life. Your blowout preventer starts with a service life of four rounds. Um, if you operate it longer than four rounds, you begin to get into territory that's dangerous where it could fail and you have a blowout. Uh, one round of service life is used up with three remaining. Now you have a choice at some point, at any point really, to overhaul your blowout preventer and uh, get the service life back. Uh, but right now you used up one of the four rounds of service life for the blowout preventer. Once you go past four rounds of use, uh, the chances of something going bad with your blowout preventer uh, go up. No pollution control equipment was installed this time. Uh, the total crew count is 110. It started with 105. Uh, 105 are still on the rig and five were sent off for training. Average number of hours per worker, 60.3 hours. Um, baseline is, is, this is pretty close to a baseline what, what you would expect normally. Um, it can't get over 99 hours per worker per round. Now, once you max your workers out at 99 hours per worker, then your production gets lower and lower. And keep in mind, the harder you work people, the greater the chances they'll make a mistake, the greater the chances of an accident, the greater the chances of a fatality. So pay attention to how many hours per worker uh, on each of these reports because that gives you a measure of how hard you're working your people. The rig equipment condition index tells you how hard you're working your equipment. Hours per worker tells you how hard you're working your people.
and the harder you work equipment, the harder you work people, uh, perhaps you get more oil, perhaps you get more revenue, but you're also taking more chances. And here's a summary of social impacts for the round. Fortunately, no fatalities, injury, safety violations, or Clean Water Act violations. And here's a carbon footprint for the round. And the total social cost. It's a monetized version of the externalities resulting from your operations. Now, on the right-hand side uh, are the financial numbers. The left produces, uh, gives you operational results. On the right, you have financial numbers. So here's an abbreviated income statement showing your revenues for the round. Your, sorry, your revenues so far, uh, your uh, operating expenses, the operating margin, you had interest expense because you've had a long-term loan. So your net income this round is $4.6 million. An abbreviated balance sheet uh, showing you your cash position. And that's really the only thing that's going to change throughout the course of the simulation. You don't have an opportunity to take on more debt. Uh, but pay attention to your cash position because you are out of the game if you run out of cash. So I suggest that, every, that the first thing you do uh, when you look at the results for a round, and see how much cash you have left and make sure uh, you have enough to operate. Here's cash flow. So this, uh, this backs out the depreciation expense. So this gives you the uh, net cash provided by operating activities for the round, 16.7 million. Here's the weather, uh, and the weather is measured, is measured on the Beaufort scale. The current round actual was five. Uh, which is a little bit rougher than normal in the Gulf. Uh, the next round forecast is for four. And uh, there's an explanation of the Beaufort scale in user handbook. And here's uh, our oil price chart. Uh, oil price for this round closed at $51.75, which was up from the practice round. And finally, the next round deadline, that's reported down here. Uh, so you can always um, keep track of when you need to enter decisions by. Okay, so that's the um, operations and financial report. You need to become very familiar with this report and how it's structured, and you need to become very familiar with how each of these numbers is connected to every other number. Because uh, here in the simulation, as in any business, as in the real world, uh, a business is an organic whole, and in one way or another, Every aspect of that business is connected to every other aspect. Okay, thanks very much.